live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering ServiceNow Knowledge 17. Brought to you by ServiceNow. We're back, this is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Rob McDonald is here, he's the head of enterprise products at Air New Zealand. Rob, thanks for coming on theCUBE. A pleasure, thanks for having me. Yeah, so That's Air great. New Zealand, uh, you know, energy costs are down, that's good for the airline business, isn't it? Uh, it is, it's good for the barrel price of oil. Things that's are rising like a tax yeah. cut to uh, the <laughs> consumer, we all go traveling. So, tell us a little bit about uh, the organization and your role. Uh, so we're in New Zealand, uh, headquartered out of uh, Auckland in New Zealand, uh, Asia Pacific based, but we have uh, routes that travel up to London as well. So uh, Air, Air Asia Pacific is our, is our uh, core business. Um, I'm part of the digital leadership team, uh, and the enterprise products are those products that a, a typical IT function would run, like a CIO would run. Um, so we have a, a product organization, which we've had in place for the last year and a half. Um, one of the product managers looks after our customers, so for, you know, for uh, online booking, um, mobile app, uh, customer experience. Uh, one of my colleagues looks after the operational products. Uh, another colleague looks after AirPoints products, like the frequent fly program, and I look after everything else internally. So you've got HR products, you've got finance, uh, help desk, uh, incident management, um, We've got mobile, uh, mobility, uh, offices, uh, workspace, and collaboration. So there's quite a, quite a bit in there. So. So, so, so what are the big drivers in your business that are affecting those things that you look after? Uh, probably the primary one now is a new focus and a renewed focus on the internal customer. Um, since, we, since we started in this role, or started in this role a year and a half ago, I've been mandating and championing the cause of the internal customer. Um, typically it's about the revenue and the external, uh, external customer, but for me it's about my internal customer. And I've got 12 and a half thousand Air New Zealanders that I consider my customers. And those guys are the ones that wake up in the morning and they look at their Apple Watch and check a message or they log in in the morning and that experience has to be correct. And it has to be right when they walk into the office and when they swipe in at the back badge or um, want to do something like get a payroll slip or something, so it's that experience is, is my primary driver. So we're looking at um, simplifying what we have, so fix it, fixing the pain points is probably my first thing. Remove all the pain points out of the way of my, my customers, my users, make sure they can operate, uh, make the job the challenge, not the tools that they're using. Um, focusing on mobility, so focusing on the more mobile workforce that we have. Um, I reckon about 60% of my user base is considered mobile, i.e. we've got crew and pilots that you wouldn't see in the head office from one day to the next. Um, and a big push on uh, cloud for uh, obvious reasons, uh, and then, um, yeah, future, future workspace. So tell us about your ServiceNow journey. When, when did that start? So our ServiceNow journey um, started just over a year and a half ago. Um, we had uh, quite a frustrating environment uh, where we had a bad reputation for digital services. Um, people weren't, weren't too happy calling our help desk. Um, the name of the product we have is called Assist, it's like a, an internally branded product. People called it Cease and Assist. So the, the reputation, <laughs> was, we had a bad reputation. So our, our, one of our primary goals is to get that reputation back, earn it back, and really try and delight our customers. So we had gone through some product selection and ServiceNow uh, came right out on top um, and was the product of choice for us to implement. Uh, so we were able to replace four platforms with, with, with ServiceNow. Um, we had one platform that we were buying parts off the internet type of thing to, to keep it going. So it was a bit of a, bit of a shaky situation. Um, bad user experience, so they were implementing ServiceNow. We, um, we made sure that we took a, uh, we, when, we re, when we did the reorganization for digital, we stopped the project and, and changed it to be a, a business organizational change project, not an IT project. So it wasn't, it wasn't IT delivering a, a product to the business, it was a, a business uh, choice and a business decision. So we changed, uh, stopped the project, we introduced and implemented change management as part of the project. We brought in different skills in terms of agile ways of working, and we changed the product structure um, uh, as well to suit. Uh, we went live with an MVP last year, uh, so we pushed out a redesigned um, a platform January last year. It was about 70% ready, so again, it was a, another new, new um, feeling for Air New Zealand staff, having a product that wasn't perfect, but you know, just suited for going live. And then we went live with a full suite uh, for what we were doing in July last year, uh, June, July last year. Uh, and it's been an awesome journey. So. so you made the decision to sweep the floor of these four other platforms. Yep. Yep. At the point at which you made that decision, you did a contract with ServiceNow, mm. what happened? I mean, how long did it take you to get to that MVP? What did you have to do? I mean, the old saying is, uh, God created the world in you know, six, six days, but he didn't have an yep. install base. <laughs> so you, you had to deal with that existing infrastructure. Yep. And, uh, how did you go from that point to the MVP, how long did it take? 
So um, our approach was to, um, we were trying to de-risk or, or learn more about what the experience is going to be for our customers. So we went live, uh, finally got live with Helsinki. So we're one of the first customers to go live in the Helsinki product. Um, in the interim, we took the existing platform and we reskinned it with a brand new look and feel. And the brand new look and feel was around how we wanted our customers to experience uh, service management, um, how we wanted to, so we follow them in terms of their role rather than just you know, rolling out the product. So we reskinned the existing product and we reiterated and reiterated on, on uh, what they wanted, you know, changing the, 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 the features on the screen and rolling that one out. So we knew that we had a really, really good product and on the day we went live, we just basically flipped the switch. Yeah, we didn't, trans we didn't uh, carry over any existing tickets, migrated hardly into data and basically started from, started from scratch just basically by flicking a switch. And the, the product we went live with um, on the ServiceNet platform looked exactly like the one we reskinned in preparation when we de-risked it. And how long did that take good. to get to MVP? Um, MVP was about two months, we included design, and then the remainder was about uh, three months. Wow. And then what are some of the things you're measuring in terms of the customer satisfaction? Obviously nobody's saying cease and desist anymore, but mm. um, what are some of the things that you're measuring, the feedback you're getting from your internal customers? Yeah, people like the products, people like the platform, they like the fact that we can access it on a mobile phone, which is again a new thing for, for uh, internal staff and your New Zealanders. Um, we, uh, and, and alongside the, the uh, digital changes, we were making some physical changes too. So we introduced a brand new help desk alongside, uh, both at the airport and in the city, uh, the city offices. So again, people were getting a physical and a digital exp uh, experience um, when, we, when we went live. Um, so they like the product, they like the simplicity. Um, our business partners enjoy the speed that they can get catalog items up uh, and get their teams more, more uh, efficient and more effective. Um, the uh, ability to do pre-approved changes um, has driven a lot of effic uh, efficiency. So I think we have over 75% of pre-approved changes. Um, we had things like, um, I think 26% of our calls to the help desk were password resets, so we're using this tool to help reduce those numbers. Um, and we've introduced a new uh, MPS score as well for a digital happiness score um, for our internal customers. So we have it for external, so we've introduced that for internal. And we promote that uh, on the front of our portal as well. So people can give us feedback in terms of what do they like and what do they don't like. So it's, so it's fairly uh, responsive in terms of how we, we react to what they want in the product. So. And you, you avoided custom mods, is that right? Or did you do some custom modification in the platform? Or? Uh, mainly configuration um, to, to get to get it where we wanted to go, and the look and feel in the portal was fairly um, fairly custom, but using uh, 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 you know um, code components available on the platform. Yeah, but so, so when you upgrade, you don't have to do the heavy wrestling with no, with we the think modification. it'd be quite an easy journey. And yeah. then how about like a single CMDB? Is that something that you guys have adopted? So, C so, so CMDB we delayed until this year. We're actually starting it next month. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and and. So what's the conversation like internally around CMDB? Is it, I mean, you got a lot of different parts of the organization mm -hmm. and, and is it going to be a single CMDB for the entire organization or are there going to be multiple CMDBs? So um, it's a big, it's a big scary topic, uh, and the um, the lady we're, we're getting on. So we're talking about how we do it in in an iterative approach and, and start small and build out. Right. And um, primarily, it will be the sort of core enterprise stack, looking at shared services stack, um, and then we need to look at. And it's been wonderful being here at Knowledge and learning how far people are pushing it in terms of their their uh, external customers. So I'm looking at operations. I'll be looking at IoT uh, and figuring out how I can use that platform to be you know, be more be more effective. Uh, and having the CMDB will be a good starting block for that. So, you said yeah. IoT. Yep. Mm. So, so opportunities for us are around. Um, so you know, we're an airline. We have yeah. plants. We have uh, power machines. We have uh, engines on planes. So, um, and you would have heard GE being mentioned uh, quite a bit here. So, what's the opportunity with, the, with with those products, and how can we use service management for event management uh, of those stacks? When we think about the the digital workplace environment um, and the connected devices, how do we use service now in that environment, and how do we use it effectively? So, I think there's a great opportunity for us there. So. When you can you take us back in, into the discussions internally when you had to, to sell the project mm. uh, in, in, in internally to the management? Who did you have to involve? What was the business case? Um, I think the, the business case was primarily led by IT, or the old IT, because it was our, it was our product. Um, uh, all the owners of the product resided in IT. Um, so I think the, the sale around the, the cost of the platform, the duration of implementation, it wasn't too hard to sell because of the risk we were carrying on the, the legacy platforms. I think the opportunity, if you flip around the other side, it was an easier conversation to our customers to say, this is what you're getting. Uh, and they were quite uh, keen and quite, quite yeah, eager to get involved in the implementation. So. Mm -hmm. and, and what have you seen so far? I mean, it's still early days, but mm -hmm. what kind of results have you seen? Can you share any metrics with us? And um, 
I've given you some indications earlier on about the you know uh, um, pre-approved changes. Um, uh, we have a bit of a I'll I'll, I'll defer on the exact numbers on, on our desk, and uh, we have so many parameters going on in New Zealand. It wouldn't be wouldn't be fair on anybody. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, so just generally the business impact. How would you describe that? Uh, very positive. So we use it in the GSS area, so uh, group shared services. So yeah. they're finding it far more effective to engage with the, with their teams and allocating work uh, and automating the workflow. Um, and we have a, a, a quite a queue, quite a backlog of other areas that want to get involved and automate and, and optimize. And where do you see this platform going? Do you see it driving into different parts of the to the business? We hear a lot about that at this mm. conference. Is that something that you guys are looking at? Yeah, yeah we. Um, uh, we've rolled out to a group, to our, our ground service equipment uh, team, so they use it for, for example, a ramp loader or someone on the tarmac notifying a vendor that there's a, uh, something wrong with a, a, a piece of equipment, so that optimizes that flow. So we're saving them uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, so that's, that's quite an efficiency gain. Um, so looking to push into, again, more uh, HR and finance uh, group shared services. Um, looking to optimize against um, our workday implementation in July, so make sure those two platforms work together very well uh, and you know, build the platform out appropriately. So. Oh, okay, so you, you, you'll bring in the HR piece, is that right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll need to find, a, I've been having lots of conversations the last two days around how those two behemoth products sit together, how you use them effectively, uh, and that's where we need to get to. So how do you, how do you use a, a portal on the front end to make it easier for the customer or the user to do what they want um, without having them to think about which platform they need to go to. So. How about the show? I mean, you mentioned you know it's great being here as, a, awesome. as a quasi yeah. newbie. Uh, is this your first? This is my first uh, knowledge. Okay. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Things so, that you've yeah, sort of yeah. learned, folks you've taught, what, what, what kinds of things are exciting you here? Uh, I like the, um, so the, so the, the service now people, uh, amazing uh, passion, um, uh, including the guys back in Australia and New Zealand, a few of them are here. Um, the, I can see the passion back there and I can see it here, so it's, qu it's quite collegial and, and it's uh, amazing to see. I think the event's awesome, it's massive. Um, the keynote was fantastic, uh, really good. And just the energy with the vendors and, the, and the, the passion that people have for the customers and what and the business value they can get from this product, um, that's one of the key things I'm hearing from, from all the conversations. Yeah. And it sounds like you're getting, you're getting what been talked about over and over, which is such the peer input uh, in yeah. terms of, of helping you figure out where you're going to go next. Yeah, lots of people are here to learn, but also lots of people are here to share. Uh, and I'm seeing that uh, time and time again, so, which is great. So. Excellent. Mm. Rob, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. No, thanks for having story. me. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Knowledge17. We're right back.